Hello and welcome back to the Hughes Enterprises channel. I wasn't planning on doing a video today, but it turns out I've got the perfect opportunity to do one. So I was doing some load testing today with some reloads in the 327 Federal and my SP-101 and 632-1 Smith out here. And what I ran into is I got done shooting a bunch in the SP-101. They all fired fine. This was a max charge that I had developed. And then I transitioned over to the the Smith & Wesson, and I thought, because of prior experience, the Smith & Wesson handles much higher pressures. Well, turns out with this specific load, that was not the case. And so, I have a perfect opportunity to show you the difference between high pressure and over pressure. So, here are two examples of brass fired in the Smith & Wesson 632. Now, hopefully you can see this pretty well on the camera but the piece of brass on the left, take a look at that primer. So you can see it is flat. You can see that the primer strike is round and deep. And you can see there's a small groove around the primer before you get to the uh, actual case head where you can see the markings. Now take a look a little closer on the right hand piece of brass. You can see that primer is very flat, and you can see it has flowed into that little groove between the primer and the case head. Now this is a sign of overpressure. This primer has flowed out of its normal area, and it actually flowed so much it flowed to where you can actually pick at it with your fingernail. You should not be able to do that with a regular fire primer. Now this primer is actually above the case had about two thousandths of an inch and you can see that the primer strike there's a little crater around that primer strike it's flowed into the primer channel now this is a classic example of overpressure and of course as soon as i saw this testing was stopped now this load is not safe to fire in the smith and wesson 632 now this is not to the point where the gun's going to blow up or anything now this is just a sign that uh, the load is overpressure it's not suitable for this gun. It happens to be suitable for this gun, but since I can't use it in both, uh, the remaining rounds that were loaded are gonna be torn apart and downloaded. Now, another thing I should mention is the load that I was using was a book load. I wasn't freewheeling here going outside of published data. Uh, this load that I fired was a max charge and listed in a reputable book. So that it goes to show that not all uh, reloading data that's published is safe in all firearms. This is why you have to start low and work up. Is sometimes stuff like this happens. Uh, this specific load does not work in this gun. Now I'm not going to mention exactly what powder, charge weight, and uh, data I used simply because there's nothing inherently wrong with the data. There's nothing wrong with the powder, there's nothing wrong with the bullets, there's nothing wrong with that reloading manual and the data that's compiled there. Uh, it did exactly what it was supposed to do. On a max charge, you are supposed to use caution. That's why it says that in the manual. And uh, that's what I did. I used caution. I worked my way up, testing each charge weight along the way in each of these two guns. This gun digested all of them just fine. This one didn't. And, you know, sometimes that's the way it works. Sometimes you never make it to that maximum charge weight that you want to get to. Now, overpressure isn't exclusive to reloaded ammo. I have run across factory ammo at times that is just too hot for certain guns. Uh, some really hot 357 Magnum ammo did stick once in my Colt Python. You know, and the primer started to flow, and that ammo simply is not safe to fire in that gun. Uh, so you use other ammunition. Well, hopefully this is a good example you can see of overpressure versus high pressure. And now you know what to look for when you're shooting the 327 or any other Magnum cartridge. Thank you for watching, and thank you for subscribing.